Thank you for that word. You know, dark sorrow had covered the earth during this time. Most of Jesus' disciples had fled. All his natural brothers and sisters had left him. Only his mother and the young boy John would be left at the foot of the cross. During Jesus' ministry, two wealthy government officials, one Nicodemus and the other Joseph of Arimathea, would come to be known as disciples of Jesus. For this, they would risk all that they had gained in the world, money, fame, fortune, power, you could fill in the blank. But in that moment, they were branded once and for all and forever before the Jews as well as the Romans, that they were going to take all that they had gained in the earth and they were gonna give it back to Jesus. The Bible says of Joseph of Arimathea, who was just a few years older than Jesus himself. The Bible says that he went before Pilate. And John's account, it says, because he was afraid at that time of the Jews. Rightfully so. But I can guarantee you that in just 48 hours, everyone would know whose tomb Jesus would be buried in. The Bible says that Joseph of Arimathea went and asked for the body from Pilate. No account that Joseph was probably the, one of the dissenters, as well as Nicodemus, when they offered a substitute of Barabbas for Jesus. But he took the body of Jesus. The Bible says that he and Nicodemus took 75 pounds of spices and preparation made just for Messiah. It said that they treated his body and they wrapped it and they put it in Joseph's own tomb. In other words, they had not only counted the cost, they had gone before the governmental authority. Their reputation and name was going to be exposed for all eternity. But yet they gave their life, their fortune, and their sacred honor. They gave all that they had. That's why Joseph of Arimathea, to me, is a hero. A hero in a time when everyone fled, but he was not afraid to flee. He says, I've got a responsibility to my Savior. This is the reason why I gained my, uh, my wealth and status, that I could uh, petition the number one ruler in the nation. And he would accept not only my petition, but I had the wherewithal, a befitting burial for my king. Joseph of Arimathea sacrificed everything and gave everything. And history would record him as the man who stood in the gap in that sorrowful hour and said, I'm the one. I'll take on the responsibility. Can you think of a more difficult job of not only loving the man that you, he became a disciple to Joseph of Arimathea to wrap this body, the Bible says, that was scourged beyond a recognizable condition and to treat him with such delicacy and such favor and all his earthly possessions and bury him like a king that he should have been. But that was just one part of the story that Joseph would experience because he would later soon experience the resurrection of his master, of his savior, the one that he had loved, the one that he had nailed his reputation on the cross to. And so this morning, as we give in our own offering, as we do every single week, think about and meditate the power of Joseph's statement. The power of Joseph's testimony of taking all that he had risked in life and all that he had gained in life and he gave it away in that moment to foster the gospel. I believe that it was Joseph's faith that spoke volumes to the rest of the disciples. Many of them might have thought, hey, I was with the man for three and a half years and was at every miracle with him. And yet here's a, here's a man that came from the stock of government, a wealthy man who was willing to give it all away. I believe that sacrifice challenged the disciples as it challenges me, hopefully as it challenges you today. And so Heavenly Father, we thank you for Joseph's faith. Lord, I am believing and praying over our congregation that similar faith in an hour when people are hopeless. 
And that faith that we resolve in our heart to take the bit, the, the, the promises that you have given us so generously, Father, to use them for your glory and for your benefit. Not only to sustain the needs of this church, but Father, on the backside of this, to be able to, uh, to know, sow the net of revival that's about to come to this country, that's about to hit this city, that's about to come back to this valley. And I thank you for every single man, woman, and child, the one that wants to give by faithfulness today, Lord, of their substance, of their earned income, of their reputation. Lord, and bless every one of them as they give. Father, we so thank you for that work of faith, that work of resurrection in our own financial condition today in Jesus' name. We so thank you for uh, giving. There's uh, on the screen there is many ways for you to give and especially through our push pay application or through our online website. And again, for those that regularly send checks every week through the mail, we so thank you for uh, continuing to sow continuing to believe, continuing to sacrifice during this very, very difficult time. We bless you. We love you. And uh, we're about to, uh, to enter into something special. Our own Every Nation City Church worship group has prepared a special uh, song of their own. We're so excited about that. I've heard it in the practice. And it's just amazing. Sit back for the next few minutes. Enjoy this. And we'll be right back to our message in Jesus' name. 